Okay, in this video we're going to try to verify some slightly harder tree identities. So, um, let's look at them. So, we have the quantity 2 cosine squared minus 1 squared um, over cosine to the 4th minus sine to the 4th. And that's going to equal, somehow, 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. So, uh, okay, so I see a couple things that I can do. Um, in the numerator here, I see uh, 2 cosine squared and then minus 1. Uh, I think for that 1, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that with sine squared plus cosine squared because um, it'll get rid of the 2 kind of effectively. So let's see how that works out. And again, the way you get good at these is by just doing a lot of them. Um, so I'm replacing uh, 1 with sine squared plus cosine squared. That's kind of a common thing to do as identities get more complicated. Uh, the denominator is actually, it's really common to see a fourth power minus a fourth power, which is actually a difference of squares. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor that into cosine squared plus sine squared um, and cosine squared minus sine squared. Um, so that's a really common thing to do because cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. I mean, I just use that in the numerator to expand 1 and make it more complicated. Here I'm going to use uh, cosine squared plus sine squared to make the denominator less complicated. Um, so if I keep going, so the numerator now will simplify to the quantity cosine squared minus sine squared squared. So I just combined like terms in the numerator and I kept the whole quantity squared. In the denominator, uh, this is going to be 1, so really I just have over cosine squared minus sine squared. And if you look at that, uh, it's cosine squared minus sine squared squared all over cosine squared minus sine squared. That simplifies to just cosine squared minus sine squared. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, because I want to get 1 minus 2 sine squared, so I need to get rid of this cosine squared. I'm going to replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. So I have 1 minus sine squared minus sine squared. And if I combine those, I actually get 1 minus 2 sine squared, which is the original right-hand side. So we verified it. So uh, it's a little more complicated because you're doing less standard things, I guess. So I replaced 1 with sine squared plus cosine squared, and then I replaced sine squared plus cosine squared with 1. That's really kind of all I did in the problem, but uh, it's definitely more complicated than kind of your basic verifications. So let's look at one more. So we got cosine squared times sine minus cosine cubed over 2 sine to the 4th minus sine squared and then that's all going to equal cotan squared over sine plus cosine. So let's see what we can do with this. I look at the left-hand side and I see immediately I can factor the numerator and the denominator, just factor by grouping or greatest common factor. So I'm going to take a cosine squared out on the top, and that'll leave me with sine minus cosine. And then uh, in the denominator, I could actually just take sine squared out of both of them. So I'm going to take sine squared out, and that'll leave me with 2 sine squared minus 1. And since I just did the last problem, I have a lot of ideas of how to deal with 2 sine squared minus 1. Um, if you look at the new left-hand side, I actually have cosine squared over sine squared, which is exactly cotangent squared, which is really good. That means I'm making progress, because if you look at the right-hand side, I wanted to get cotan squared. So I have cotan squared times sine minus cosine, all over 2 sine squared minus 1. So I'm going to do basically the same thing that I did in the last one. I'm going to take this 1, I'm going to blow it up into sine squared plus cosine squared. So I have 2 sine squared minus the quantity sine squared plus cosine squared. And if you've done a lot of identities at this point, you know we're basically done, because we're just going to kind of combine things and then factor and then cancel. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I uh, still have this numerator, cotan squared, sine minus cosine. Somehow I have to get rid of that sine minus cosine. Um, but the denominator is going to help me out with that, because the denominator now is sine squared minus cosine squared, which I recognize as a difference of squares. So difference of squares is really crucial on these. Uh, you get to use it a lot. So we have uh, still our numerator. And that's divided by, I can factor the denominator into sine minus cosine and sine plus cosine. And then the the sine minus cosines are going to cancel, so this whole thing simplifies to just that cotan squared that I actually kind of got in the first step that I did over sine minus uh, sine plus cosine. And if you look at that, that's the original right-hand side, and so we're done. So that's two examples of slightly harder trig identities. Uh, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.